me put the cruise control on here. That way I don't get in trouble. And it has been um, an interesting journey in my family. Let's just put it that way. A very interesting journey. Okay, this is part two, or maybe part three, it depends on how I break up the video, of my upbringing. So my father was, a, in addition to being all the things that I told you before, he was also a crane operator from the age of 16. He was a local four member for 50 years. And he worked back in the day when you had to have muscles to be a crane operator, pulleys and all that. Now you just have a thumb toggle and you just kind of... But back in those days, or the, you know, the, watch the Flintstones. That was my father's job. My mother was a cleaning lady. She only had graduated from high school, and so she really couldn't get a job. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. I felt the anti-lock brakes come on. I definitely did. I don't want to go onto the dirt. <laughs> wow. Anti-lock braking, baby. I can feel that thing come on. Such is life when you explore the back roads. Anyway. I saw the hard life my mother had because she was saddled with all these kids and stepkids and more stepkids. My father, he married somebody, she was horrible. He had stepkids and his life was really hard. Not exactly the kind of life I wanted for myself. And I was constantly being told, you know, get get out of this town, get out of this life, don't repeat our mistakes, don't have kids too young, go to college, get an education, and get out of here. Go get a better life. And I... You know, when I was a little kid, they didn't say that. That wasn't even an option back when I was a little kid. But by the time I had reached 17, that started to be said. Especially by my second stepfather, Bob. He really counseled me. He was wonderful for that. Little Portuguese guy. Wonderful guy. I said, I, I'm not going to call you stepfather. I'm just going to call you Bob. Because that, to me, that, that means more to me. He really was amazing. He, he died from the COVIDs, unfortunately. Not all that long ago, actually. He was 84, I think, when he passed. So, one for you, Bob. Anyway. Oh, look at us. We're hearing... Town of Coates, huh? Well, well, well. I bought a desk from that place. That's, that's an old antique shop there. Or at least it used to be. Plenty 
plenty of gas, right? Yeah, I do. So anyway, where was I? So like I said, I was going to go to college or, or something. I, I was going to do something. I didn't know quite what I wanted to do. I didn't take school seriously at all. I didn't have a sense of the impending future. So all through high school, all I focused on was my, my goofy little job delivering newspapers to whole cities. And uh, my girlfriend and my car. Drinking and... So, um, what really changed for me, my perspective entirely, let me see, i got to find my, I think it's this road up here, yes, 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 I'm going to take them right here, Cape Fear Christian Academy, ah. So I grew up fighting, I grew up hard scrabble. My mother was renting out every every piece of space that she could in the house just to make the mortgage. She had you know, me and Mark and John and uh, then Bobby for a while, my, my brother, Bobby, my stepbrother Bobby, that was Bob's kid. Bobby was, was definitely Think of, imagine Fonzie, but with knives. That was my brother Bobby. I was always kind of the nerdy one. He was always the cool one. Got lots of, you know, fights and avoiding fights and that kind of thing. Of course, my father counseling me the whole time. I'll tell you about one time later on. I think I already told the story, but I'll tell you later on about one thing that happened. So I met a girl when I was 13. Fell madly, madly, madly in love. We broke up, got together, broke up, got together. I pined over her for the whole time I was in high school. And finally, in my junior year, we, we got back together again. And we hung out pretty much exclusively until... Uh, until senior year, and what had happened was she was, oh goodness gracious wow stop a sign she was poor like I was grew up on welfare, but she had always fancied herself better than all that so she wanted to get out too, and her dad was French. She had never known him. She endured rape and uh, and pedophilia and child pornography just to find him in France. And when she found him, he was so happy because he had been shunned by the rest of the family because he was French. And they didn't want to have anything to do with him, even though he was a great guy. She found him and ended up kind of leaving the guy that, that uh, had brought her to Europe, the porn dude who ended up in jail for like 30 years, thank God. But um, at that point when I reconnected with her in high school, she had, she had gone to Paris in the summer of uh, 87 to stay with her dad, her papa. <laughs> and so when we hooked up again, she said, hey, you know, if you come to Paris next summer, we can hang out because I'm going to be with my papa. I said, all right, I'll do it. So I told my mom, Ma, I want to go to Paris next summer and be with Monique. And he, she said, okay. You know, she never believed I'd do it. Nobody did. But that year, from fall of 87 to spring of 88, that year changed my life. I started reading, I started thinking, 
uh, Monique and I had conversations uh, that just expanded my mind, expanded my consciousness. And I loved every second of it. I wanted to live that kind of a life. But still, I wasn't, I wasn't focusing on school. So I didn't get good grades, and I went to my mom and my dad to tell them, you know, in June. Not, oh, actually, they called me in the living room. My mom and my father came over to my my house and called me in the, in the parlor, sit on the sofa. All right, we're going to talk to you about your future. Well, what do you mean? Well, you're going to be a senior next year, so uh, what are you going to do with your life? Uh, probably go to college, I'm thinking. College? How are you going to go to college with your grades? Are you even passing? Well, you, you, yeah, I'm not getting great grades, but I think I'll get D's. I was happy to get a D back then. You're not going to go to college. My father says, I'll get you in Local 4. Come work with me in the Cranes. And I, I had seen his work in the Cranes. I, had, I wanted nothing to do with that. Oh, look at where I am. Who knew?